There is two feelings involved in a max effort set, and that is fear and pain. That was scary. I didn't want to attempt that one again. Welcome back, heavy duty crew. We are here yet again at the Acadiana Muscle. Come here to get some gains to uh, stimulate some growth. We'll be training legs today. It's October 9th, Wednesday. On Friday, we'll be nine weeks out from our national debut. Not much has happened since the weekend. I've been confined to a mowing tractor doing drainage right <clears throat> Not something I enjoy, being trapped in a machine, knowing that I need to be getting steps in and going through the episodes with the hips and the IT bands and the hamstrings and all that. But I've been doing some stretching, been getting out of my machine, trying to keep everything loose and limber for the punishment due tonight. This holy war that I'm about to embark on. And I am not looking forward to it. I'm not excited about this training session. I don't want to do it. It doesn't feel good. I don't feel so great. I'd much rather just walk around town. <laughs> but I got to train. And uh, I was admiring my wheels before I started. And I thought to myself, it's those days. It's days like this that made that possible. Pushing through regardless. So we're going to do it yet again. Not in my right mind. I started warming up on the uh, Pit Shark RDL. And I forgot all about calves. So we'll just do calves later. Not a big deal. I'm going to go ahead and hit it where I started. So not much to say, guys. Uh, the food has been getting easier. That massive amount of food that I was forcing down is getting a lot easier to eat. Just in time for all my food to get taken away so we can start pushing to get shredded but i expect performance to be up today despite how i feel i know deep down that it'll be better even though i don't feel like being here at all but then again i guess i think that if you train legs hard enough for long enough your body's subconscious reaction knowing that you're going to come and do that to it is to uh negatively react you know it knows what's coming it knows i'm going to want to puke i'm about to mess it up it doesn't want me to do this it's sending me signals it's like nah man just don't do that don't do that we don't need to do that oh, i'm gonna do it anyway all right enough yapping i'll see you guys on the top set got my belt on that's why i do it right there so yeah i'm all geared up today i needed a haircut and i need a little bit more to brace with started warming up 11th hour by lamb of god came on and i said fuck it i'm putting five plates on each side i want to be the best i can be 405 was easy last time whatever this is this this thing apparently weighs between 20 and 60 pounds according to google so i don't know it's five plates per side if i fail at five it was five perfect reps hey there guys Yeah, we got stronger. Yeah, it moved way easier than I thought it would. And once I was in, I was in it. So I'll be walking through the changes that were made. So today I decided to go one more notch forward on the belt squat. I talked about last session, how once I got heavy enough, I was finding this balance displacement where it was wanting to pull me forward. And that balance in turn, where rather being off balance, you're not as stable in your pull and you're always wanting to readjust to find that, that natural path of least resistance to move through, which is good. You know, when you're pulling from the floor, you're doing a hinging movement. I don't want something pulling me out of a bind. I'm sorry, putting me in a bind, pulling me out of alignment that I would then be fighting against it. So I went ahead and moved it more, one more forward so that I would be more so over it. And that allowed me to pull a lot more stable and that really torched my glutes. I'm definitely gonna need to strap up next session, get my wrist wraps on. But uh, I wonder what my heart rate is now after that. <laughs> Got me to 118. <laughs> Cardio, baby. Ooh, my glutes are torched. 
We're gonna go do our hamstring isolation, then we'll hit our quads. Ready or not, here we go. Lying hamstring curl, this evil yellow beast. You know the orcs paint something yellow so that it blows up. It makes bigger explosions when it's yellow. That's the magic of color. And this thing is absolutely gonna blow up my hamstrings and it causes more destruction than it has reason to. It doesn't make sense why this machine is so brutal other than it's literally yellow. Now this is something I was appreciating before I came on camera, just not, you know, just to show off my ass, but the meat of my legs now. You know, I never liked my hamstrings or thought my thighs were that impressive. Seeing how far I've come in terms of development, you know, that's a bit of a reward. You can look at that and it, it's encouraging, you know. It's part of the reason I ripped that set earlier. It's just when I see the things I have improved with this methodology, with this persistence, with the plans I've put in place, that's an instant gratification. And it's the only instant gratification you get in this is looking at the progress you've already attained. And that was inspiration enough to keep going as if it's not already embedded in my being, but it was lubrication to keep going. I had a raw dog that if I had to, I had a little lube, if you know what I mean. A little oil, a little grease. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this fitting single leg. <clears throat> Start off with the weak leg first. And this might be brutal. I think I had 35 last time and it was devilishly hard. So <clears throat> keep the hips tucked. Don't over exaggerate it. Don't be nerdy about it. Just try not to keep it, the butt from hiking up. Oh, come on, motherfucker. I'm gonna force rep and give myself a negative. One more. Oh no. <laughs> it was gonna fall. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit my strong leg. There ain't nothing strong on this machine. You get that mic out of my face. Uh. Oh. One. Nope. Total failure on the negative, on the concentric, and the eccentric portion. I was giving myself assisted reps. I wouldn't even call those reps because I had no more pulling power with the leg once it hit exhaustion, but trying to control those negatives. You know, in those last reps, you can see I just bailed because it's fear factor at that point. I'm just afraid something's gonna pull off, so <laughs> I just set it down. But my hamstrings, wow, absolutely smoked. Heart rate spiked head hurts from the intensity. <laughs> See the smile on my face now? I came in here, that smile wasn't on my face. But once you dig in, you just gotta get through it. You gotta push through it. There's this old phrase we used to say when we'd see a real good looking woman would say, I need a pound of her excrement to smell her flower. And uh, that's how this is. <laughs> you gotta eat that shit, man. You gotta get into it. Ah, oh, smell of that flower that I got right now. It was worth it. It was worth feeling so shitty and, and going in anyway. Oh, it's hard to stand off. And off to the leg press, baby. Time to train quads. All right, here we go. We're gonna match the same weight as last week. Six plates per side. This is the uh, closed stance, closed feet position. Very deep, knees over toes or bottom and out here. I gotta try to pay attention to how hard I'm pulling on this handle because I uh, definitely feel like I could hurt myself at certain points. So I'm gonna try to be careful with that. And what I wanna focus on here is trying to push as evenly with both legs as possible because if I get off to one side or the other, that sucker's gonna take a hit. Again, we're going really deep, really high knees over toes. So that's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of tension on the quads and the uh the attachment points involved so back to the fear there is two feelings involved in a max effort set and that is fear and pain
Yeah, we call that RPE or RIR1. That was scary. I didn't want to attempt that one again. I could feel my lower back getting real tight as well as my left knee. <sighs> then I recorrected myself, got back in the groove, got out two more reps. That last rep was terrifying and uh, we beat our reps from last week, so that's progress. I'll go forward and hit my legs on that, uh, that quad extension and that'll be it. That was, that was scary, boys. That hurt. All right, so same thing as last week. We're gonna try to remember the cues of tucking our hips back. That way we're lengthening our quads before we even start the rep. Lengthen them even more before we start contracting them. So again, isolateral, weak side first. Tuck the hips back. See the difference? We talked about that last time. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. The mic's over there, I hope you can hear it all. I'm smoked. I'm smoked after doing that and I'm ready for this to be over so I can get some nutrition in and get to walk and get my steps in. Failure happened fast. It doesn't take long. Again, that's forward, that's back. Oh. As you can see, the, uh, the isolateral, the prioritization of that weak body part, we got the same number of reps on both sides, whereas my right leg would be simple. <laughs> would usually be, typically be stronger than my left. But the fatigue that was generated from performing the first rep balanced it out. So we're kind of evening out the progression for each side. And that's how you want to do it. Yep, losing the lines, losing the lines. That's how it's a good pump. That's how you know. The adduction machine. We've got it maxed out at 250. Put the gym pin in it, give it an extra 10 pounds. That's how we're gonna start our progression on this. No need to warm up. I mean, adductors got hit already. You know, they've already done a lot of work. Not directly, but indirectly. So they're plenty warm. It's gonna suck. I say that a lot. All my sets suck. Ooh. Oh. Could not complete another rep properly. Oh, but I felt it from the from the start of the first rep. That was intense. That was a lot of tension applied to the area, unlike anything I've ever felt before, because it was more weight than I've ever used before. So big win, big win. We'll do the same thing on the abduction machine, as we were maxed out on that one last session as well. So we're starting new rep ranges with new progression. Abduction, very important for reasons I have stated many times or rather every time I do this set. Yeah, my legs are so pumped that I can't get the machine to lock all the way. I'll try it again. There we go. This is gonna suck.
I feel dizzy after that. It takes so much effort just to move it. That made me dizzy and nauseous. I'll show you guys some stretches. That's where we'll go next. So these are a few stretches that I've been doing that's really helped uh, since I had that IT band adhering to my hamstring issue. And once we broke that up, everything shifted into the hips and the, the middle part of my hamstring. And I just had all kinds of issues going all around and everything was just perpetually tight. And it turns out it came from my quads. So yes, I did some quad stretching, but you wanna be able to stretch everything. And that's what I'm gonna show you right here. And I'm not a super mobile guy, and I wouldn't imagine you are either, if you even got to this point or you would need this information. So this is something simple you could do pretty much anywhere. And like, it's the stuff I've been doing at work. So really all you need is something about waist level that you can simply throw your foot up on and stretch your hamstring. Rather than doing all the toe touch stuff, this is really nice because you can lean into it at your own leisure. So we're just gonna throw a leg up. Your heel would be sitting on whatever. And you just lean in and you lean in a little more. And what I do is I hold it for 20, 25 seconds at a time, and you'll feel the different parts of your legs, you know, the parts you're stretching, you're gonna feel them loosen up. So I'm just gonna sit here for a little bit. Mm, it's really getting, it's tight in there. The more I lean in, the worse it gets. But then as I sit into it, it gets a little easier. So, ah, yeah, that feels good. Ah, and another thing you could try too, is if you stand upright, you can try to push your leg down and you'll feel it hit in the middle, right behind that knee. Yes. Push down on it. Oh. oh yeah, that feels better already. Ooh. You can see my, my left side is tighter than my right. It's easier for me to get into position, but I just wanna sit in there. You feel that tension, you feel it hurt? Just kinda rest there. Ooh. So that's simple enough for the hamstrings. You could do that on a tailgate of a truck, a big tractor tire, whatever. Or you could lay on your back, put one of those heels up on the wall and push as hard as you can, which is what I was kind of talking about here by pushing down on that leg, engaging that hamstring and pushing down. So here's the quad stretch, super simple. Same thing, get there and just pull that leg down. You can let your foot go along your side for even more of a stretch. You can drop this knee a little bit to force it even more down. And that's just stretching the crap out of my quads. Oh. Where this has really benefited me and why it's so important for me to do this and it may be for you is the kind of training we're doing on legs is really hard, really heavy, really intense. And it creates a lot of inflammation and a lot of tightness. It's a hammering on the legs. Well, the problem for me comes in is that I get stuck on these stints at work where, you know, I'm trapped in the seat of a machine. I'm trapped in a seated position all day long. I'm not using my legs. I'm not walking on them. They're not getting blood flow. They're not getting circulation. They're not moving and alleviating that tension in a natural way. So what happened was, is I trained legs and then I ended up sitting for almost three days, you know, running this equipment. Those issues just compounded and it got really bad. That's what caused that adhering and and the stuff in my hips once I broke that loose. So this is preventative. And I noticed that my legs have felt a lot better since I started doing this. And this is a practice I'm going to keep in place for sure. Cause my legs just feel better. You know, I'm doing it. Oh, that freaking right quad is tight. Yeah, don't fall and break your ankle though. I can feel it loosening up. It was tight as shit and hurt really bad at first. And it's just gradually getting easier and easier. All right, so that's hamstring, quad. Now I'm gonna show you a little something for the IT bands. And uh, I dread sitting on this dirty ass, disgusting floor, but it is what it is. So this is pretty simple, right? One leg straight forward, get your ankle up around, like right above the knee on the other leg, and just push, push down on this knee. And you're gonna feel it, the IT band running along the side of your leg and going into your hip. And it's just gonna stretch all that out. And if you can lean forward, give it some of that. Oh, ooh, this side is bad. Ooh. And that's just something that you guys can implement if you've got any hip or knee or lower back, IT band, pain, any sort of pain in the legs. I mean, I think you can get some relief by you know implementing those three simple stretches, help balance everything out. You're gonna find out what's really tight when you start getting into those positions and you can alleviate it. You can get them loose. It's great to do after training. 
you know, prolonged periods of, of being seated and get up and start putting that stuff to practice and uh, it'll help you out. It's definitely helped me out in this last week of doing so, so much so that it's something I want to keep in because boy, did it make a difference because when you're in that kind of pain, like I was in where you can't sleep and it makes life hell and I, I don't want to go back there. So hope that helps you guys out. <clears throat> hope you enjoyed the workout today. Hope you emulate it yourselves. Grow some big wheels. This was leg day at the muscle. I'm Primar Billy and I'll see you guys when we train arms.